now available in paperback and e-readers, Spellbound, a darker shade of black. Get your copy today at your favorite online bookseller. Hollywood Historical Men in Crisis One of my viewers wanted me to do another installment in the Hollywood Historical Men in Crisis series. And for this installment in the Hollywood Historical Men in Crisis series, I'm going to be talking about legendary rapper Tupac Shakur. Now, Tupac Shakur was an iconic entertainer of the early to mid-1990s, becoming a dominant star in the world of rap music gangster rap, and acting. And Tupac Shakur could have gone on to much greater things. Unfortunately, Tupac Shakur did not have a man to give him guidance early on in his life, and this is what led to him winding up on the road to becoming a man in crisis who wound up passing away in 1996. Now, Tupac Shakur was born LaShawn Parrish Crooks, to two Black Panthers, Alfani Shakur and William Billy Garland. And both of his, Tupac's parents were members of the Black Panthers. And at a month before Tupac Shakur was born, his mother was tried as part of the Panther 21 and was charged with over 150 criminal charges in connection with incidents related to the Black Panthers. Now, while Tupac Shakur's mother, Alfani Shakur, was cleared of all charges, unfortunately, she was stigmatized and in some ways possibly blacklisted, and this is what led to Tupac winding up on the road to becoming a man in crisis soon after he was born. Now, again, Tupac Shakur was born, originally born LaShawn Paris Crooks, but his name was changed when he was one years old to Tupac Shakur and was changed to be named after Tupac Amaru II, the descendant of the last Incan ruler who was executed in 1781 after his failed revolt against the Spanish rulers. Now, Alfani Shakur says she wanted to name him after a revolutionary from indigenous people of the world and wanted to know that he was a, a part of world culture, and this would be something that would foreshadow Tupac's future, and it would also foreshadow his life later on as he was on the road to becoming an entertainer. But sadly, he, as he was on that road to becoming an entertainer, he was on the road to becoming a man in crisis due to the dysfunctional way that his mother was raising him. And his mother wound up possibly raising him that way because, again, she was possibly stigmatized by employers due to her time associated with the Black Panthers. And because she was possibly unable to find full-time employment, this is where she dealt with the stress of not being able to be able to build a life for her son by going out here and taking drugs, and as she became addicted to drugs like crack cocaine, Tupac Shakur was basically on his own and basically learned a lot of things from mostly female authority figures, and as he learned from female authority figures, he did not really get much guidance from men to be able to know how to navigate life as a man, and this is basically laid, laid the foundation for Tupac being on that road to becoming a man in crisis. Now, Tupac's mother couldn't find work in New York City, moved to Baltimore, Maryland, and this is where Tupac went to Roland Park Middle School, then Lawrence Dunbar High School, then transferred to Baltimore School of the Arts, where he studied acting, poetry, jazz, and ballet, and even did Shakespeare performances, and at that time, he had befriended actress Jada Pinkett, who was an inspiration for many of his poems and also went on to win competitions at his high school as a rapper. But Tupac didn't also just listen to rap music. 
but he also had a knack for comedy and also was a interested in other types of music such as Kate Bush, Culture Club, Sinead O'Connor, and U2. And also, was as he was at this School of the Performing Arts, he then also connected with the Young Baltimore Communist League, where he dated a white woman, Mary Baldridge, who was the first girl he dated. And again, this, this was a major surprise to a lot of people to find out that Tupac, the black rapper, who was all about the streets in the hood, was involved with a white female communist. And as after he got involved with this white female communist, he um, eventually then later on moved to California in the San Francisco Bay Area. And this is where he went to go to Tompolis High School, where he did more theater performances. And he, while he didn't graduate, he wound up getting his GED. And this showed, again, how it basically foreshadowed everything his mother had said as related to when she renamed him Tupac. She wanted him to be a part of world culture, and he was a part of a lot of different cultures as he was out here in, in, in his high school years. Now, Tupac, after he got his GED in 1988, then began recording records under the stage name MC New York in 1989, and began attending poetry classes of Lila Steinberg, and Lila Steinberg soon became his manager, organized a concert for Tupac and his rap group Strictly Dope, and this is where Tupac got signed up by Etron Gregory, the manager of Digital Underground, and then wound up working with Digital Underground as a, as a roadie and a backup dancer, and then eventually wound up doing some background music on the song, the same song, which was one of Tupac's early hits where he did a little bit cameo on that record. And this led to him going out here and showing that he was a very versatile entertainer because Tupac started out as a very versatile entertainer before he went out here and left the digital underground, he then started to change his image to this whole narrative of gangster rap. Now, gangster rap at the time was the way the mainstream media wanted to co-opt rap music. They wanted to change the narrative of rap music from what heterosexual black men had made it into, into something completely different. And they wanted to make it all about the streets and crime and they used Tupac like they used the N.W.A. to be the face of that new narrative. And that's what Tupac's album, Tupac Apocalypse Now, is all about. It was all about changing the narrative of rap music. And sadly, because Tupac was a beta male, he could not see that he was being used as a pawn in that entire narrative to change the narrative of rap music. So Tupac started out as this gangster rapper, but he never was a gangster. No, he was a beta male who was being led around, first by mostly female authority, white female authority figures, and now was being led by white media A&R types as related to changing his image into this whole gangster image and this whole thug image. And this whole thug image basically was the thing that really started Tupac snowballing down the road to becoming a man in crisis. Because while Tupac was getting major success in the entertainment industry by going out here and having successful rap, gangster rap albums, he was also out here also getting acting jobs in TV shows like A Different World with his friend Jada Pinkett at the time, and also then later moving on to movies like Juice and becoming somebody people were seeing as a very versatile performer. Unfortunately, the big problem with Tupac was as he was out here playing the role of a gangster in television and movies and in his rap songs, he began to believe a lot of the it, narratives that were being presented by the record companies and the publicist regarding his image and started to believe he was an actual gangster and not an entertainer. That was what led to Tupac really starting on a road 
to his a decline as related to his career because as his career was rising and he was growing as an entertainer in the early to mid 1990s he started to believe that he was an actual gangster not understanding the whole concept of a gangster rapper and a gangster overall was a social construct that was created by those white a and r executives in order to capitalize on trying to breathe brand new life on stereotypes regarding heterosexual black men and was meant to be sold to the masses but tupac because he had no father or men to go out here and give him guidance to let him know that everything about the gangster was fake started to believe everything about the gangster being real moreover tupac really didn't have any guidance on how to deal with women in relationships from a father or other men and because he didn't have this he fell into the path of female predators and those female predators were the thing that really started him down a really bad road where his personal life really got into a lot of trouble his personal life really wound up having a lot of problems because he started getting involved with a lot of the wrong kinds of women and those women basically were looking to try to say that Tupac had committed a lot of sex crimes like in 1993 where Tupac was charged with allegedly sodomizing a woman in his hotel room and went out here and got involved with this woman Ayanna Jackson who they, she who alleged that Tupac went out here and had sodomized her inside of a in his hotel room and this was what led to Tupac's first arrest in 1993 and led to him having a lot of controversy now if he had a man in his life to give him some guidance a man would have told him never to bring a woman to your hotel room because it's your word against hers moreover if there was a man to sit down and talk to him about going out here they would have talked to him about what happened to mike tyson just about two or three years ago as he was imprisoned for getting involved with the wrong woman desiree washington and the thing was to protect yourself but the sad part is tupac had no man to give him guidance and this further led to him going further down the road to becoming a man in crisis after this first arrest and while he was acquitted of those crimes and the associated gun charges that also came along with them he also was convicted of first degree sexual abuse for touching a woman's butt and all of this could have been avoided if he had a man in his life but what the what he didn't understand is that what they were doing was looking to set him up for these crimes in order for the police to be able to keep targeting him and that's what happened later on after he was again arrested for another sexual abuse charge and was put on Rikers Island he then was out here not understanding that they were looking to find some way to keep him in prison and keep him incarcerated for all sorts of crimes and eventually by 1995 he got an appeal and was able to get out of jail but then later on went out here and was also just still out here doing all sorts of things with this whole gangster stuff and again all of this gangster stuff he was doing basically was putting him further down the road to derailing a successful career that he could have had and further put him down the road to becoming a man in crisis now again tupac really never had any father to give him any sort of guidance or any sort of man to sit him down and give him some sort of guidance in order to navigate life and because he had no man to teach him male life skills or male survival skills or teach him how to avoid different situations or how to read people this is why tupac wound up while he had a lot of great success wound up getting into constant trouble over the let over the couple of the last two or three years of his career i mean he continued to get into constant trouble because as, as he got caught up in this whole ideal of becoming a gangster he didn't understand that that it was all an image and he tried to make it into something real and as he made it into something tried to make it into something real 
he didn't know that he was playing with fire. And Tupac basically wound up going out here escalating his behavior year after year, getting into it with people, getting into back and forth, and was so caught up in his gangster image that things, he didn't see the fire he was playing with back on September 7th of 1996 when he went to go celebrate his business partner Tracy Daniel Robinson's birthday and attended the boxing match between Bruce Seldon and Mike Tyson at the MGM Graham, and that's where Tupac basically wound out that he was not a real gangster because he ran into real gang members, and as he ran into real gang members, this is where Tupac basically found out that the, the streets are not some place that he needed to be. As he got into it with these gang members, in that MGM Grand Hotel, this is where Tupac sadly wound up meeting his demise. And some people want to say that Tupac met his demise at the hands of Dwayne Keith Davis, known as Keefy D or Keith D. And this was the man who allegedly was the shooter who took the life of Tupac Shakur. But if Tupac Shakur had a father in his life or a man to give him guidance, I don't I believe Tupac would be alive today and he possibly be would be on Hollywood's A-list as an A-list star and he possibly would be up there with Will Smith and Denzel Washington as one of the iconic stars of the 1990s. Unfortunately, due to the dysfunctional way Tupac Shakur was raised by his single mother, this is what led to him not having the male life skills or male survival skills in order to navigate Hollywood, and because he didn't know how to navigate Hollywood as a man, he wound up becoming a man in crisis whose career was cut way too short before he could actualize his potential. And Tupac's whole story basically shows us what happens to a young black man when there is no father in his life to give him any sort of guidance. Yes, he may get opportunities. Yes, he may get success. But if he doesn't have a foundation in manhood established from his father, he won't know how to avoid the pitfalls in his life. And as a black man, he won't be able to understand how to avoid certain situations and understand that certain things as related to media are not real as related to black men because if you had a if Tupac had an actual father to model manhood for him he would have a man to let him know that the whole concept of a gangster is a social construct made by Madison Avenue in Hollywood it is not something that is real related to black men no it's a narrative that white supremacy creates in order to create a repackaging of their stereotypes like the black brew and that's what they wanted to turn Tupac into with that whole gangster image and sadly he bought into that image not seeing what white supremacy was trying to do to him as related to his image that's the great irony about Tupac overall while he was raised by black panthers sadly those black panthers were not in a place to give him black awareness and because they were not in a place to give him black awareness, he, while well, he was going out into the world and was becoming a multicultural, very diverse man as related to art and culture, he really didn't understand the foundation of that multicultural world was white supremacy. And in the world of white supremacy, a black man has to watch his back because in, in this global system of white supremacy, a black man has a target on his back. And that's something that really led to Tupac having problems in his later years because as a successful black man, he didn't understand that the, when law enforcement puts, sees, puts a target on your back, you have, to be, you have to understand they want to widen that gyre so they can take easy shots. And that's what happened to Tupac once he got arrested in that hotel room. He widened the gyre on him and led to them being able to take easy targets at him and take shots at him. And as they took shots at him, this basically was Tupac still trying to maintain this image, which was never real. And sadly, this is what led to him becoming a man in crisis 
who had a successful rap career but was never able to enjoy it while he sold 75 million records worldwide and is one of the best-selling rap music artists it was his whole being caught up in the whole gangster thing that led to him not being able to enjoy any of the success he achieved and sadly he wasn't able to enjoy that success because while he grew up to become a male he never grew up to become a man and sadly because he never learned what he needed to be a man he wound up dying a man in crisis now this video was a one requested by one of my viewers and if you want to request a video in the Hollywood Historical Men in Crisis series, you can send a donation to the Cash App or the PayPal. And if I know something about that individual or that subject, I will make that video for you. And if you want to learn why men like Tupac Shakur never get to enjoy any of the success that they work for, you can pick up my book, The Man Crisis, to learn about the dysfunctional pattern of behavior that takes successful men like Tupac Shakur down the road to becoming men in crisis. That's all I have to say for this installment of the Hollywood Historical Men in Crisis. If you want to continue watching these, these installments, you can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, The Man Crisis. Learn why so many men are struggling to find their way in an increasingly gynocentric world in The Man Crisis. Get your copy of The Man Crisis in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today. Now available for the first time in paperback, why 70% of black women are single. Learn all the reasons why so many black women can't find a husband and why 70% of black women are single. Get your copy of why 70% of black women are single on Amazon.com today. Now available. In paperback and Kindle, vampires stalk the darkness of the Eternal Night. Get your copy of Eternal Night in paperback and Kindle on Amazon.com. Support Black-owned and Black-operated digital broadcast media, www.niceradionetwork.com. Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.